Good afternoon. Uh, my name is CJ Adams, and it is an honor to be here with you today. Uh, I work for Google on a team called Google Ideas, and our team was set up a few years ago by Eric Schmidt and Jared Cohen, in large part because of this map. Uh, they looked at where people were coming online the fastest in the world and realized that the next five billion people to join the internet are going to be joining in places that are strife with violent conflict and also face extreme threats to free expression and freedom of press. But as a company, Google didn't uh, understand what it's like to live in these areas and use technology in those places. So our team's remit is to go spend time in these regions uh, to understand the threats that users face there and figure out ways that we can build technology that can help. Because these are the problems that the world is going to be facing in the coming years. So uh, I'm the product manager on two products. And I'm excited to show uh, demos of those. But before I do, I'd like to make a couple comments just about technology in general and what it can do and what it cannot do. Because I think that there's this tendency in uh, Silicon Valley and in tech thinking generally that we can just invent some great solution. And then we you know, put it on the screen and give a TED talk, and then it's just solved. And everything's done, and we can go home, and censorship's over. And that's just not how the world works. And many of you know that. The technology by itself will never solve the problems that we're talking about here. You will. Technology can only accelerate the change that people are making. It's a tool. It's a tool that can be picked up and used for good or used for ill. It is itself inherently neutral. Um, Gmail can send a love letter just as fast as it can hit send uh, hate speech. A text message can give someone access to banking just as quickly as it can set off a bomb in a crowded square. What matters is how people use technology and how that can help them impact the world to make it better. And that's what I find so encouraging. Because in a place like this, you have so many people that are driving change towards a world that's more open and more peaceful. And I'm excited to find ways that technology can make that work go faster. So I'll give two examples today. Uh, and, and what I'd like to do is just present these as uh, small examples of the type of work that can happen when we work together to try and accelerate the change that you're already bringing to the world. When I spent time in, um, in Burma and Thailand and Vietnam and Hong Kong and spoke with people uh, in Ukraine uh, and, and Iran, I was surprised that again and again, I kept hearing uh, journalists and activists talk about a specific type of threat they were facing called the DDoS attack. And this is a distributed denial of service attack. It's basically where an attacker takes a bunch of junk traffic and throws it at your website until that website goes offline. And what it means is that anyone who can launch one of these attacks or buy them, and they're cheap, like 100 bucks, 200 bucks can, can launch a small attack. Anybody who launches it can purchase someone else's silence. And we saw this happening at the moments when activists needed to be heard by the world at, at, at crucial points where they needed to get their word out, uh, word out to the world. So the first thing we did um, was try to quantify this risk, show how common and prevalent it was. And we uh, started a website called digitalattackmap.com. And we'll do a quick demo of that for you here. If we switch over. And it turns out that these attacks are not uncommon at all. Uh, in fact, tens of thousands of them are happening every day. And what you're seeing is every attack happening in the world right now. This is updated every hour to show every DDoS attack. And I won't get into the details of it, but what's been most fascinating is the way in which we can see conflicts in the physical world uh, manifest themselves in the digital world. And so I'll just go through a couple examples of, of trends that we, we were able to see. Here you can see uh, when the protests were happening in Thailand. This graph at the bottom here shows that Thailand rarely ever showed up on this map. And then during the protests spiked. This was people taking newspapers offline, taking blogs offline, people uh, attacking on both sides of the issue to try and silence the other's opinion. We saw the same thing during conflicts in Turkey, um, in Ukraine, and against uh, uh, Ukrainian news sites that were hosted in Poland, as well as news sites in Russia. People trying to control the debate and control the conversation by launching attacks to censor the other side. Uh, we also saw it in the conflicts uh, around the Gaza Strip. People, again, trying to control the message there. And this is from yesterday in Hong Kong. 
DDoS attacks coming in to try and take people's voices offline. Now, we wanted to bring this tool up just so people could see the situation. And millions of people have viewed this map and have been able to use it to tell their story and say, hey, I'm under attack. I need help. Look at what's happening. Uh, because the people who are least capable of protecting themselves are often these small groups and small journalists. So if we go back to the, the slides, if you are a journalist in this crowd in Thailand or in Ukraine, having a pretty picture of a map, uh, a, a pretty map of, of attacks hitting you, that doesn't really help you very much. What you need right then is a way to know that when you're in this bustling crowd and you post something to your blog, to know that the world will hear that and will be accessed and everyone can find what you're saying. So that's why a year ago, we started something called Project Shield, which was an experiment to see how we might be able to use Google's uh, infrastructure to protect free expression online. And wh what this service allows is for bloggers, uh, independent media, human rights organizations, and elections monitoring organizations to use Google's DDoS protection to protect themselves from traffic under times of attack. And we've had the ability to protect hundreds of, of uh, major news sites and human rights groups in places like uh, Iran. We kept the elections uh, monitoring group up in Kenya for the first time in their history. We were able to protect websites in, in Hong Kong and, and in, in the uh, Ukrainian conflict on both sides of the debate to keep newspapers alive and keep those messages up so the world can read them. And it's not just uh, Google, this is much bigger than Google. Uh, we had, I was so excited to see uh, Cloudflare started Project Galileo to do the same thing, offer free protection to people so they couldn't be censored. We saw FireChat, who had invented a, uh, an app that would allow people to chat without using the internet at all, see their app have incredible downloads in Hong Kong. And then the people who made that said, hey, we, we can make this better. Maybe we should think about encryption. Maybe we should add these features because it was suddenly being used for change and used for good. And I think that's the exciting point, is when technology companies can just listen to the incredible work that you're doing and then figure out ways that technology might be able to push that forward. Your voices should never be silenced. And I look forward to working together to make a world where that type of censorship is simply not possible. Thank you so much for your time.